Here's what I call the best kept secret of the rich. Interesting discovery that I made one day. I couldn't believe it when I found out that rich people have about 24 hours a day and poor people have about 24 hours a day. Wouldn't that drive you mad until you found out what the difference was? I'm telling you the difference is in the management of the time. A few simple disciplines practiced every day and your whole life can change. Now this is an important point because so often we find ourselves racing to get ahead, thinking about our next achievement so much that we can't appreciate the time in between. Happiness is here and now. Happiness isn't the end result. Happiness is part of the journey. There's an old saying that goes like this, the road to heaven is heaven. The happiness that you're searching for in the future must be found today. The success you're after in the future will only be found by working on it today. Success is the balance between the need for active achievement and the satisfaction in taking the time to acknowledge what you've already achieved. Take time to reflect while you're enjoying the plateau. And while you're reflecting back on your past accomplishments, think about something else. Think about the potential within you that's still untapped. Consider these two questions during your time of reflection. Number one, what could I have achieved in the past had I been more diligent? Could I have been more disciplined, worked smarter instead of harder, said no more often to social functions, to community commitments? What could I have achieved in the past had I tried a little differently? Only you can answer this question. It's very personal. While you're reflecting and enjoying your plateau, all I'm asking is that you dig a little deeper and see if you can't be a bit more effective next time. Work a little smarter instead of a little harder. So that's question number one. What could I have achieved in the past if I tried a little more diligently? Now here's number two. How can I achieve more in the future? Well, if you take some quality time to thoughtfully answer Question number one, you'll probably have a clue as to what's needed in the future. Do you need to work more diligently? Do you need to be more disciplined? Do you need to work smarter instead of harder? Do you need to say no more often? Do you need to manage your time better? That's one of the keys to reflection. You can put down on paper what worked for you in the past and figure out ways to translate this information into the future. You can design your better future if you can learn from your past. You can face your future with more excitement, more anticipation, when you design a future worth getting excited about. You can see your future and have it pull you, but don't forget to appreciate yourself for what you have done so far, for what you have done today. Know that your appreciation of yourself and your achievements will continue to fuel the fire of ambition. Self-appreciation is an integral part of success. You must develop a strong appreciation for your own style, your own methods, your own process. Take a self-appreciation inventory. Ask yourself a few questions. Start with number one. What have I achieved in the last four days, the last two weeks? the last six months, the last year, the last 10 years. What have I achieved during these time periods? Write it down. Take a self-appreciation inventory of all you've done and all you've accomplished and all you've become. Take inventory of yourself. Now compare this list to your goals. Have you accomplished all you set out to do in the last four days, two weeks, six months, one year, 10 years? Compare your list. Maybe you've been so busy trying to reach your goals that you haven't taken the time to sit back and reflect on where you've really been. Look back at your list and say, wow, I really have been through a lot. I really have learned a lot. Look what I've done. Look what I've become. I wasn't like this 10 years ago 
or even one year ago. Look at me. I'm doing okay. Building your ambition takes little steps. One step at a time, one day at a time, one week at a time. And it's like taking your family to a reunion where people haven't seen your kids for six months or even a year. They say, my, look how you've grown. Well, you know your kids have grown, but when you see them every day, it's hard to notice. So write down all your accomplishments and see where you've been and what you've done and who you've become. You'll say, oh, look how I've grown. And that's step one in taking a self-appreciation inventory. Now here's step two. What could I have achieved that I didn't? Be honest now, this is your inventory. Nobody else has to see it. What could you have achieved over the last week, the last month, the last quarter, the last year? What could you have achieved that you didn't? Would a game plan have made a difference? Would your direction have made a difference? Would greater preparation have made a difference? Would more discipline have made a difference? In how you changed your habits, changed your life, would time management have made a difference? Major time over minor time. Ask yourself, what could I have achieved that I didn't? Now take this one step further with number three. What do I want to achieve in the next four days, the next two weeks, the next six months, over the next year, over the next 10 years? What do I want to achieve? Well, all this falls in line with your goals. What you could achieve has to fall in line with what you want to achieve. What you could do has to line up with what you want to do. And what you could become has to meet, what do I want to become? Everything affects everything. And through the proper disciplines practiced every day, every day, every day, through the proper disciplines, the what could I do has to match up with what do I want to do. And here's number four. What can I do to achieve this that I'm not doing now? What could I do to achieve my goals that I'm not doing now? What things do I need to work on that I'm not working on now. Remember, it's easy to do the disciplines, the little things every day, and it's easy not to. It's easy to, it's easy not to. Look back at the list you made of your three most important work-related goals. Look back at your list of the three most important personal and spiritual goals. How are you doing with these? Are you making progress a little each day, a little each day? Are you appreciative of the progress you've made so far? It's important that you take time out to acknowledge yourself, your achievements, what you've done so far, where you've come, who you've become. Self-appreciation is a stage in building ambition that takes a little more maturity, a greater resolve, knowing that you'll do it until until you get it done and taking the time out to acknowledge yourself for doing it. Self-appreciation comes from already being firmly set on the course of positive self-direction, being on the right track, having that wonderful blend of humility and self-esteem, knowing within yourself that you're accomplishing your goals and knowing yourself enough and being confident in yourself enough to avoid needless bragging. Self-appreciation says that you admit there's room for improvement, knowing that you're on the right track, but admitting the need for continued growth, more books, more seminars, more skills, more disciplines, greater awareness, bigger vision. There's always more room to grow. There's always more knowledge to gain, always more skills to perfect. We're never done with the education process because education is part of the path to wealth. Education and learning is part of the path to health. Continued education can turn you around if you're headed in the wrong direction. We need the mental food that others provide. We need mental exercise. We need to open up our minds to different alternatives. We need to learn to appreciate the other side of the debate 
so that we can strengthen our own and defend our own. We need to expose ourselves to a wide range of thoughts and philosophies and ideologies. You've got to listen to a variety of speakers, read a variety of books. No one speaker has all the answers for you. No one book has all the answers. You can't get all the answers from one person. We need a variety of influence to give us input, to give us ideas, to manage our business, to manage our relationships, to manage our finances, to take advantage of our time. We need a variety of influences. We need a variety of books in our library. We need a variety of tapes in our video library, our audio library. We need a variety of voices. And here's what else we need. We need a variety of points of view. Points of view can be so valuable. Somebody says, did you ever see it from over here? And you say, no. So you step over there where they are and you take a look back over here from their point of view. And you say, my gosh, I never thought from this perspective. It's so different. No wonder you think the way you do. Here's the clue. Take advantage of all that's available in terms of mental food and mental exercise. Be eager to learn. Always be eager to learn, no matter how far along you are in the journey, no matter where you are in your success. Keep that eagerness to learn. Gather up as much knowledge as you can. And then what? Debate it. Put it all on the table and look at it. Dissect it. Turn it around and stare at it. Ask questions. Make statements. Don't take it for granted that one person has all the answers you're looking for. Take their knowledge, but don't take it as the only knowledge. Make sure that what you finally do, the model you develop of strong appreciation for your own style and your own methods and your own process for achievement, make sure that what you finally do is a product of your own conclusion. That's what's valuable. Not to just go do what someone says without debating it. Consider the source and then do it your way. You can take an interest in what someone says, digest it, take notes on it, but then debate it, look at it from all angles. Be a student, not a follower. Building your ambition is a process unique to each and every one of us. Gather all the knowledge that you can, then develop your approach as a product of your own conclusions. Your own conclusions, not someone else's conclusions. Your own conclusions. You can't fall for other people's philosophies. They may not be right. As you collect knowledge, you must sort through it and find out what's valuable. Then you can develop your own philosophy. And your own philosophy becomes the most important of your guidance systems, one of your guiding lights. So develop your own plan, lest you get into trouble with someone else's, and debate the plans of others, the philosophies of others, the achievement styles of others, the way others appreciate themselves. Debate all this. Why? Because it affects everything. The value you place on your plan, the value you place on yourself, the value you place on life in general affects everything around you. It even affects how you respect time, the 24 hours a day given to each of us to do with as we please. There's a connection between appreciating yourself and appreciating and respecting time. People who appreciate themselves understand and respect the use of time. 